The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. So happy to be back. Feels like it's been way too long. We're going to talk about all kinds of NHL and catch up on the NHL because, man, we're a little ways into the season, and we really haven't talked a whole lot about it. And I know one man is very excited to get into hockey, and that's Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing, man? Dude, I am more than ecstatic to actually get to talk about the NHL here just because, like you said, it's been a while since I've been on. Obviously, we've missed you guys, and we've just been so busy just to get back on, but it is what it is, but now we're thankfully to be back, and NHL has definitely been going on in a really good swing. Obviously, I know every night being able to watch an NHL game has always warms my heart. I know, obviously, you're, you're getting back into hockey like I am, but I mean... Looking at it overall, this lineup for what we've seen for games just so far, we've seen a lot of really good games. We've seen some upset games so far earlier this season, and even just looking at throughout the entire lineup just for what we got less to games. I mean, obviously, tomorrow is going to be a rematch of the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs going with the Boston Bees, then against the underrated Florida Panthers is what I always say. Then just even looking at some other games, I, I know Chicago plays tomorrow, Detroit plays tomorrow. Then we got some good games going on this weekend for a good Thanksgiving week. Then, Josh, what else do we have on the lineup for today? Yeah, I mean, just really all kinds of NHL because, man, we haven't really talked a whole lot about the NHL. We talked about how bad the San Jose Sharks are. I know we talked about that earlier on yeah. uh, in the season. But, you know, and, and a little bit about Connor Bedard, and we're going to get to him too because he's a guy I, I think is going to draw a lot of attraction, and rightfully so, and we'll talk a little bit about him. But let's start off with these top teams and everything and kind of getting into them. But before we do, let's first mention our sponsor for today, and that is Big Frig. Big Frig is an amazing product. If you're looking on the camera right now, you can see uh, my Tumblr that I've got, an amazing Tumblr sent from Big Frig, and we thank Brock over there at Big Frig for sending us all of our gear and the things that we've gotten from them. They're all amazing products. It's not just Tumblrs. There's coolers and gear and all kinds of stuff, and Jeremy, you and I talk about how much we love Big Frig and the amazing products that they put out because when you compare them to competitors, man, if you're needing a tailgating cooler or just a cooler to have for your everyday use, hunting or camping or just bringing it out on the road with you, whatever the case may be, their coolers are amazing. And comparing to the competitors, Big Frig is just so much better than the, the rest of the competitors. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, just outside of just comparing them to competitors, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with the comparing them to competitors. Like, you look at the coolers in general, like, first things first, the design-wise, I absolutely love the design. I'm a hunter, so when I first saw the cooler that we received from Brock and Big Frig, the Badlands camo, that is my absolute favorite scheme that I've seen on a cooler. Then looking also further in depth in the cooler, just like the little 8-bit things I'm going to start off with. A drain plug. You think, okay, it's a drain plug. How much excitement can you get out of a drain plug? But, like, you look at this drain plug, guys. It's actually a screw-in drain plug compared to, like, other competitors where they're just pop-off drain plugs, just a little plastic, not even thick, insulated. But, I mean, you look at these, and, like, if you're trying to yank this drain plug out, you're going to have to put some effort into it. I'm going to tell you that. But also, looking inside the cooler, they're heavily insulated. The little details, like the basket that... I've always talked about I love having that just because when I bring it on trips for me, I love to store like cheese or little itty bitty things inside that basket just so it doesn't get cool on the or soaked up in the water and the ice. Then also the little divider. It's also it's really a cutting board. It also places a fact of a divider. And I love that factor because one side I'll want to shove like um, shove drinkage in my one side, then store meat in my other side. And that was, that's always a nice thing that I have a nice way to divide what I want to have in my cooler. Then, like I said, heavily insulated, then literally you, you can look at big free coolers all you want. And the more you look at it, I'm going to tell you straight up, cause I did this. The more I looked at it, I want to get it and I did get it. So I don't know how much more we can brag about Big Fruit, but I'm I'm telling you guys, it's nothing but the truth. But Josh, did I, did I miss anything out of Big Fruit? No, I mean, I think you named it all. Big Frig is an amazing product, guys, and we encourage you to go check it out. Go check them out. That is BigFrig.com. That is B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com. And we partnered up with the, with Big Frig to give you guys a great deal for being our listeners and our supporters. We're going to give you 20% off if you use code RISING220. You should be able to see that all down in the description, so you can look down below. Uh, and then if you're watching on youtube you can see the graphic down below as well that is rising to 20 that is r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o-2-0 and get yourself 20 percent off at b-i-g-f-r-i-g.com big frig coolers they're amazing products jeremy i got one thing to say guys you will not be disappointed <laughs> 
<laughs> you will not be disappointed at all. But let's get into it, man. We've got a lot to get into, and we're talking about NHL. Like I said, we haven't been able to catch up on the NHL and really dive into it really deeply. So let's start off by ta- talking about these top 10, you know, or I guess the, the top teams from each conference. We're going to go starting with the Eastern Conference. Let's start over there because we're going to talk about Boston, the team that had the best season last year. And like you mentioned a moment ago, the, the matchup between the two, uh, the, the you know, with the Florida Panthers and Boston and how how that one came down to such a heartbreaker for them last season, but they definitely had the best regular season out of any team in the NHL ever. And so looking at Boston, I think they're a team that you can be very excited about watching this season. And, you know, the crazy thing is how they lose uh, Patrice Bergeron. And uh, there was another that they lost to, wasn't there? Uh, to, to retirement here this last season. Um, um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank, but, I know exactly who it is too. It, you know, looking at the, at the Bruins, I just wouldn't expect them to have have come out and been this strong uh, and and the fact that they they have was just absolutely amazing um so uh you know it was uh Krejci, uh yeah, david Krejci. that was the other one that retired so they, they lose two guys but then you look at the way that david pasternak and and brad marchand and a bunch of other guys on this team are performing right now they're sitting there at, at an amazing record right now they're sitting there at, at 13 and one uh they are just absolutely dominating uh, and then, you know, you go right below them. Of course, my New York Rangers fighting right behind them. But how can you get any better when you're talking about the Bruins? Uh, let's just kind of start off with the Bruins. I mean, they've, they've had an amazing season so far and just unstoppable. Uh, I, I watched them last last night against uh, the Lightning and, and the way that they, they fought back in that game. And they just sit back and they preserve their energy and just blow you out in that third period. And you can't do anything to beat them. Uh, but so far, just an amazing, amazing start to the season for the, for the Bruins. Do you think we can have another historic season? from them again all i'm gonna say is they need to make it past the first round if they're gonna have another <laughs> historic season like that but no going on talking about the boston bruins i mean the you can t- you can say whatever you want about the bees but i mean the boston bruins are definitely a team that you always got to be a p- paying attention to just look at the history of the boston bruins and what they've been able to bring to the table like you really look at this kind of an aspect they're leading first on their division and having Big key players, like you said, obviously having Pasta, having Bergy, then even in between the pipes, that's your biggest thing is having – it's one thing to have a goaltender – I mean, having forwards and defensemen being good on the ice, but it's also another thing to have a really good goaltender between the pipes to, to keep the goals out and have a good GAA and a save percentage. But looking at the overall time for the Boston Bruins, watching their gameplay, they are – they are physically dominant, whether it's – it doesn't matter if it's whether it's the offensive zone or in the defensive zone or even in the neutral zone. They will find a way to get the puck out of the opponent's hands, and they will do whatever it takes to drive into the offensive zone and put that puck in the back of the net. So, really, if Boston keeps rolling on like this, they're definitely going to be a team – like they have been the last couple of years. They've been a team to reckon with. But, I mean, you look at this overall aspect and talking about the Boston Bruins, if you're not playing on your A game, you're going to be going in – whether it's – in TD Garden in Boston or wherever you're playing or whoever opponent you're playing, you're definitely going to be in for a dogfight. So you have to bring our A game night in and night out to the table against the Boston Bees. Well, and, and you brought up their goaltending too. And what's amazing too is with Swayman and Olmark both, they're both sitting at over 92% on, on save percentage. I mean, anytime you can sit there at, at a 90% or above, these guys are, are exceeding that. And so, I mean, just just the overall aspect of, of how how – well-rounded this team is even after losing two huge leaders of that team you know with with losing those two guys but like you said Pasternak has been the guy this season every time that I I see the Bruins playing his name is being called out several times I think he had two goals last night if I remember right so just the the fact that that he's been able to step up into that role and and this Bruins team just doesn't look like they've skipped a beat but let's go on to the Rangers because another team of course I'm excited about it Uh, I I mentioned I didn't think that they were going to start off so great this season I thought maybe they're going to have a slow start work work their way into the playoffs but you know they, they get rid of their coach I don't know there's a lot of questions when you whenever you look at them um, but, you know, uh, Panarin has, has been phenomenal. I think he's leading uh, in, in points, goals, and assists mm-hmm. right now for the, for the team. So uh, just looking at, at him and what, what he's been able to do. Uh, and then, of course, you still got Shruba out there being a team leader, and I think he's one of those uh, older guys that's really able to, to help out in the leadership on the team. Uh, and, and just looking overall at this, this Rangers team, They've, they've also gotten to an, an amazing start looking at them at 12 and three. Uh, this is not where I thought we'd be sitting this far into the season. So as long as they can ke- keep things rolling the way they have, I don't see too many teams being able to compete with the Rangers either. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's one thing to have one stellar good team in a, in a, in a, 
uh, in a conference. But then you look at this kind of a conference, and each team you look at in the top five has all been pretty dominant at the start of the season. But going further than the New York Rangers, obviously, I'm kind of going to be a little bit repetitive, but it takes one thing to – to be good and obviously got to have good players on offense I mean down on the corners and you know, on the blue line but obviously going talking about Shesterkin and the pipes for you guys that's been a big big key thing for Shesterkin I know he hasn't had his greatest games but obviously the New York Rangers still having the having the physicality to get the game game in a win for them is huge and like you said talking about uh Posture, not posture, not, but um, Kevin VC even also with the New York Rangers, he's definitely been a big key match. I mean, a key factor to the New York Rangers. He's been he's put up some points in the last couple of games, and it's just one thing to play the puck, but at the same time, just be just be smart and be defensive in that neutral zone, and just being able to be um, be aware of any kind of a situation whether you're trying to get a breakout or just step in front of the puck and just bring it into the offensive zone while you're trying to transition. But really, if you keep playing in this kind of physicality and in a dominant kind of a game, these teams, you're not going to be able to pick one individual team going into the postseason. You're going to be – your brag. I might have to make like 20 brag. It's just because at this rate, anybody's possible to – just from how strong that they're playing, just be able to even get an attempt to try and win the Stanley Cup. But nothing's nothing's set in stone for right now just because there's a lot of good teams that are in the NHL right now that, that have just been putting up unbelievable numbers. Yeah, it's, it's hard to beat a team, too, whenever you've got Shesterkin and now Jonathan Quick. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, adding those two games. And then we, we only saw one game from – I don't really know how to say his name properly, but it's Domingo. Uh, and, and seeing him step in, he played one game, and he sat there. I think he went 100% on that game. He was 26 mm-hmm. saves. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just – I think you've got three – goalies that you can lean on if you really need to and it, time will tell with uh with Domingo but right. uh just seeing this whole team and everything that they've been able to do uh and and what they've got of course still having Fox on your on your uh, team I think he's an amazing defender to have and you've still got Lafreniere and you've got so many guys that you can build around and you can sit there and, and you can be truly uh you, you can you can go all in on them you, mm-hmm. you know you've got Keto. I mean they've, they've got a, 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 a star-studded roster. roster uh and whether Patrick Kane does decides to come back or not it, it doesn't really seem to matter for this team and I think overall when you look at this team it, they've got such a spread on that on that uh, star-studded roster that it really doesn't matter because they're just gonna they're gonna find a way uh, to win regardless of how they have to do it mm-hmm. but let's go on because right below Boston and their division is the Florida Panthers and we're gonna see this matchup tomorrow night and we're gonna talk about that one here in just a moment but the Panthers starting off their season to a 12 and five. Uh, and, and just seeing what they put together, I think Kachuk coming in and, and being that star and that guy that they can lean on was huge for this team late in the season last year. It really led to a, a big winning streak leading them into the playoffs, coming in as an, as an underdog, making all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. This was a team that nobody saw coming uh, the way that they, they came. And then now you've even got Reinhardt stepping into a, a really big uh, role right now. He's leading them in, in goals this season. Mm-hmm. And I just, I just look at this team. They're one of those teams that's really hard to go against because of just how – how uh, you know they don't have this long list of stars the way that maybe like a, a Boston or a Rangers does, but they've got a team that just collaborates really well and they've got that chemistry together and it showed last season. And I think looking at it at this this season, I think they've got such a strong defense that I think they could really lead to another uh, another strong season this year. Oh yeah, absolutely. Looking at the Florida Panthers, they easily. This is my opinion. They easily have one of the best blue line teams in the league looking at them. But like oh, yeah. you said, looking throughout the entire set, it, it goes to show you whether you've played with the Florida Panthers organization for two years or if you play them with them for 10 years. Their chemistry and how able – how they're able to adjust so quickly for players is truly unbelievable. And it's not just even with the Florida Panthers. It's just throughout the entire organization in the NHL. But you you really look at the Florida Panthers in specifics. Like they will they can turn a switch on in the flip of anything. Like they can literally all of a sudden just bring everything or they can just back up and be mellow and be protective with the puck here. Like the Florida Panthers they're definitely – I've said this even last year. They're underrated. And looking at this kind of a start with what you said, 12-5, and five, correct? Yeah. I mean, they've – they're proving a lot of people wrong compared to how many games they won last year. And I think this is their redemption year for what, what Florida Panthers want to see. And they want to bring a Stanley Cup to the state of Florida. And if they were to bring the Stanley Cup to the state of Florida, that would be huge for Florida. And looking at this overall aspect for the Florida Panthers, they definitely – 
they definitely got a lot of looks coming into their organization because a lot of people were thinking after last year that it was just a lucky fluke year, that it was just a one-and-done situation. But no, the Fort Panthers are back, and they mean business, everybody. So I yeah. think the Fort Panthers are going to be coming with a vengeance. Yeah, and, and it's it's uh, one of those teams, too, that I think after they had that spurt and they finally have belief in themselves, like, hey, guys, we can do this. Yeah. Uh, now you're seeing them get to a, a kind of a faster start this season where they don't they don't necessarily have to fight and claw their way into the playoffs the way that they have the last couple of seasons. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, just seeing seeing where they're sitting right now, I think they sit in a really good spot if they can keep on this momentum and, and keep that going. And, and yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I think they, they're tired of being looked at as the underdogs in Florida. You know, we always look over at Tampa and think that they're the they're the team of Florida when it comes mm-hmm. to the NHL, yep. but they're, they're trying to stick around and say, no, we're, we're in this fight too. But let's go on to Toronto, a team that wants to put last season and that, that playoffs uh, behind them because they finally got their playoff win, and then they go on and just get smacked around by the Panthers. Uh, mm-hmm. So just seeing what they were able to put together, they still had an amazing season, an amazing uh, an amazing playoffs, really, when it mm-hmm. came up to that point. Mm-hmm. And seeing how they were able to fight and, and put together a team, now they're sitting here looking pretty good this year. I don't think they're a team to look past whatsoever. They're sitting there fourth in the Eastern Conference right now, uh, sitting at 10-5. and five. Uh, What are you thinking about the about Toronto right now? Before I get into anything, I'm going to save you a lot of things. If my hockey coach hears this and anybody that I know that plays up in Canada, it's Toronto. Because if you don't hear, if you don't get crushed, I mean, corrected on that, you're going to get beat. But um, <laughs> no, Toronto is definitely a team that it's kind of in the same situation. They can all of a sudden be absolutely great. And their record says that they're doing really positive right now. Obviously, I know we still have a lot of NHL season left ahead of us, but anything's possible for the Toronto Maple Leafs just because, obviously, you look at their lineup. Like, you got Austin Matthews. Um, I can keep going off. Probably Neil, not Nylander. Um, um, oh, why am I drawing a blank on his name? I think it's number 16. Um it might even be Nylander. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on him, but they do have Nylander on their team. Is, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Think so they, they still have him. But um, just looking at the Toronto lo- roster, they definitely have plenty and plenty of speed. That's and they've the got Tavares league. on their team. Yeah, John Tavares, uh, Riley. I yeah, mean, they, they, the, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the list goes on with yeah. them too. They're they're an amazing team. Absolutely, but I mean, the Toronto Maple Leafs, they can definitely. If they're trying, it's crazy. Everyone always looks at like compared to Connor McDavid for his speed, but you look at Austin Matthews and you sure. look at anybody else on the Toronto roster. I guarantee you, they're not far behind them because any guy up there in Toronto, they can skate and they can play any style of hockey that they want to. I well, mean, and and another guy to add to that list too is Matthew Nyes, a guy to watch out for. We talked about how amazing his story was last year. Yeah. He came in playing in the in the Frozen Four. And, and, you know, making it far there and then just go straight from there just to jump over to the NHL playoffs yep. and, and help out this team. And he was a big part of their team, too. He he's, he went out and he was actually on the ice playing and mm-hmm. made made, made big plays. plays. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, just seeing him, I think that's a guy to watch out for and a, a young rookie that could really make some noise when, yep. when you start to look at the big picture of things and, and where uh, Toronto would be. Uh, and, and I'll say it that way because it's also about, not a boat. So uh, they, they can okay. they, they can't tell me how to talk. Um, <laughs> yeah, just looking at, at the Maple Leafs, though, I think they've got a scary team that could really turn on the Jets towards the the back end of the season. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's it's really early in the season too, and that's something to remember uh, is that you know there's so much hockey to be played mm-hmm. that none of these standings really matter a whole lot. Uh, and then not a whole lot to say about Tampa Bay. I think they're a team. Uh, they're sitting there at number five in the in the East. I think they're a team that that can turn it on, but what we see against you know teams that that are you know these these bigger teams, uh, you know they they I felt like it kind of looked like they struggled a little bit against the Blackhawks, and we'll talk about the Blackhawks a little bit. I think they're a team that could turn things around, and especially the way that their draft has gone and yeah. where it leads. But then you know you go against bigger teams. Uh, I think they they handled the Oilers really well, but they're kind of in a sticky situation right now with getting rid of their coach and a lot of this this kind of drama kind of uh, surrounding uh, you know around that organization. Yeah. But uh, when when you look at at the way that they performed against the Bruins, I just felt like they 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 hung in there and, and they they played a really good game. And and whenever they they finally come out and and they they end up pulling that game out, uh, it was it was just a game where man they 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 don't 
they don't go away. And, you know, they, they stick around. And I think that's the, the best thing about this Lightning team. I just don't see the star that is going to stand up and, and really shine for the Lightning to really help them. I think in hockey, that's one of those games that you really need that guy that you can go to and you can lean on uh, the way that the, the way that you can uh, you can look at Connor McDavid and how he turns on the Jets and key moments or even uh, guys like, uh, you know, you can look all over. I think Patrick Kane has been that guy in the past. And, you know, you, you need to have that guy. And I just don't really see that from the Lightning right now. Um, but that's the good thing about them is I think they use a team effort to really put that together so far. Absolutely. Like the, you said it the best. You may not have a key person on the roster that's just going to be flying up and down the ice and just being able to score points, whether it's from, from the hash marks or from the top of the circle or whatever the situation is. But just having that competitiveness that the Tampa Bay Lightning are be able to bring in night and night out is just one – it's a big key crucial thing. And that sets a tone for every player in that locker room. And they, they look at this total as like we not we may not be the best team in the league here, but we can still come out and we can put points on the board, guys, and we can still we can still find a way to get to the Stanley Cup playoffs, and we can still find a ways to keep climbing up in the rankings here. But obviously, you got to take one step at a time here each night in and night out for everybody, and just being able to find that next key person for the Tampa Bay Lightning is just going to be just going to be one of the one of the bumps that you got to find in the road here. Yeah. Just, it's, it's it's literally a big thing for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Obviously, I've always just been used to. Um, I want to say it's Sergachev in the net. I, don't, I can't. I think I might be wrong, but I can't remember. But um, no, I think it, no, it's Vasilevsky. There we go. Yeah, yeah. And um, we we're always just seeing used to Vasilevsky in the between the pipes and. You can go look at all of his stats and all of his highlight saves he's done with the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's truly been unbelievable. But looking at this overall aspect, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they need to get their – like they're getting their feet rolling, but they need to find that next gear and get – get even more speed going into the going into the heart of the NHL season here. Yeah, kind of dipping their toe on the water, but they just need to f- be fully submersed yeah, in yeah. there. And and I think you could you can make an argument that Kucherov is kind of putting himself in that position, yeah. but I'm just not seeing a consistent guy that is out on the ice constantly flying around that way you, that you do see with these teams that are fl- that are, are amazing. You look at Boston, the the best the best team in the NHL right now. And you've got a guy that's standing up, whether it be Brad Marchand or Pasternak, I feel like you've got a guy that you can lean on. And they've even got more guys to go on on top of that. Uh, or if you, you can put together a squad like the Rangers have and get these stars that want to stick around to try to win something, but just not seeing it from the lightning. Yeah. Uh, let's go over to the Western Conference, though, because I think this is a, a conference that's really exciting. And even seeing some newer teams, let's start off with a team that we know that we're going to talk about a lot throughout the season. And San Jose Sharks? Uh, that's not a team that I was thinking oh. of. I'm thinking of the Vegas Golden Knights, oh, okay. uh, a team that you even made your prediction that this could be a team that could go on and win it again. Mm-hmm. And they are. They're looking very dominant. And even in their losses, uh, it just looks like a, a, a squad that may have just come out there and, and not prepared for that match and maybe looking ahead or whatever you want to call it, maybe just getting worn out. Yeah. But they look like a team that's being steady and they're they're going through and they're winning games com- comfortably. Uh, looking at, at the Golden Knights, they're sitting at there at 13 and four right now, number one over there in the West. Uh, and man, they, these guys just look really dangerous. Uh, the, the, you know, every time that I see them on TV, and the, again, they're they're another team that I don't feel like they have that guy, but. They do it the right way where I think they really distribute the puck really well. Uh, and they've got guys, and I think Carlson is, is probably the guy that you got to go to mm-hmm. and say he's he's been the guy that has really stepped up and, and been really big for them. But other than him, uh, I haven't really seen somebody step up to be that leader for the team. And that may be the thing that's holding them back from really stepping forward the way that we've seen from the Bruins so far. Um, but regardless, I think that it's early enough in the season where they've got plenty of time, much like the lightning, plenty of time to, to really get warm and, and get, get yourself on a really good streak. Absolutely. I mean, talking about the Vegas Golden Knights here, I mean, just outside of being in, in Viva Las Vegas here, I mean, the Vegas Golden Knights, they are, I'm still going to be blunt. They're going to the Stanley Cup Finals. I'm going to be blunt with it. Um, this is definitely a team that you can definitely see putting up a big fight compared to having somebody talk about other than the Boston Bruins here, in my honest opinion. The It's a big thing for the Vegas Golden Knights. They're still a really, really young organization here. They haven't been in the NHL nowhere near compared to Boston, Washington, or any other NHL team here. This is going into year number seven. Correct me if I'm wrong. Cause Yeah, it would be number seven because six was when they won the Stanley Cup. And looking at this team here, they've got another lineup here. Like They may not be no 
know Boston have one and one individual person top dog on this spot, but like the Vegas Golden Knights, the way that they're playing, their offensive style of play is definitely huge. They they know a really good way to control the puck. Their power play is scary good. Oh, yeah. And if if you find the right opportunity to get to see the Vegas Golden Knights play, I recommend you guys do it just because you will definitely see what the Vegas Golden Knights mean. And just even being able to stick go into the state of um, I shouldn't say the state, but going to see the venue and how they do their pregame intros, it's truly unbelievable. With the coming out of the uh, the Knights Knights helmet, that's really really cool. Yeah, one and, of the coolest entrances. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I don't know the top three that probably is the coolest is Vegas, um, Edmonton, and yeah, like Texas. The yeah, yeah. The Stars have a really yeah. cool one. I kind of like the Kraken too. They've yeah, they've, they've kind of. They've, they've they've created or, something. I feel like they can do so much better on their mascot. Or the though. Santa, oh, <laughs> the little don't fairy. Get started. <laughs> it, mm, that just gets me going. Or even like the San Jose Sharks skin out of the Sharks head. Yeah, but. yeah, definitely. But you have to play good for me to even recognize exactly. you. So, uh, yeah, it's it's really hard to to really root for them. But yeah, going back to the the Vegas Golden Knights, just really solid all all the way around, and a team that uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see them make it to the Stanley Cup Finals again. Especially looking over in the West, I don't really see a West team that is really dominant. Of course, we're going to talk about the Avs here in a minute, but uh, I think the Avs may be that team that's always going to start off slow and just kind of keep themselves around because they're fine. They're, they're, they know they're fine. They know what they're capable of, mm-hmm. uh, and I think they can put that together towards the end of the season. Definitely. But going on to number two in the West, a team that I wouldn't have expected to see in this, and I don't really have a whole lot to say about them, is Vancouver. Uh, and, and seeing the Canucks up there at number two in the West, that's been really shocking. And, and seeing what they've put together, they're sitting there 13 and 5, and they're just winning games. Uh, again, another team that just has that good team chemistry and piecing piecing together the, the right pieces in a puzzle mm-hmm. to come away with wins. Uh, I, I like what I'm seeing from the Canucks so far. Yeah, I, I'm I'm the same boat. Usually, I have a good vast of knowledge, but the, for the Vancouver for Vancouver Canucks, <laughs> I'm tongue twisting and everything. Today. I forgot they're even even yeah. in the NHL. <laughs> like, at, well, don't. Don't have candy that come and knocking on you. But, I mean, Vancouver Canucks, they have definitely been a team that you have to watch out for, to say the least. But, literally, you look at this kind of a record and being able to show that we're not here to mess around anymore. Like, we want to actually be a team to where we we can be reckoned with compared to, obviously, Edmonton or Calgary or Toronto. I mean, they definitely want to get their name back in the spotlight here. And this is definitely one of those years to where I think if they stay at their competitiveness and stay how they're playing – they're definitely going to begin a lot of talk about here coming out of the later season. And don't get me wrong, like they're they're getting talked about, but it's nothing near compared to what the hype is for any other team down here in the states, like Boston, Washington, or whatever. But they definitely can be a sneaky good team, and right now they're definitely becoming a sneaky really good team here right now. Well, and, and they're a, they're a home team too uh-huh. because they're seven one and one so far in the yeah. season at home, and I that's just dominance. If you can dominate at home, I feel like you have a really good shot throughout the season. Definitely. And if you can keep yourself higher ranked in the in the standings like this, you have a good shot of keeping a lot of those games and starting off and ending those games mm-hmm. in the playoffs at home. And mm-hmm. so that's a really key factor right now. And so keeping that that ball rolling again. Any, it's anybody's game right now. It's anybody's chance to go into to the, you know, when we're talking later on in the season of playoffs, really anyone can make it there right now. So nobody's out of it. But looking at these top teams so far, I think it's exciting. But going on to number three, sitting there at 11-3, and three, we've got the Los Angeles Kings, uh, a team that, you know, I, I don't ever expect them to just kind of bomb out of it and, and not make the playoffs, at least not anytime soon. Right. They've been a team that I think has, has been really solid, uh, putting together some really solid wins. They're they're on kind of a, a weird streak right now where I know they were on a little bit of a losing streak, bounced back and, and started winning a couple of games here recently again. Um, but just for them, I think it's really important. I think it was a few nights ago, too, seeing them go against the Panthers. I think that was a game that really stood out to me, that, man, these these Kings are really still still here. And their defense is what, what surprises me the most. I think that's the that's the part about this team because I think that was a game where it was only two to one mm-hmm. and I, I think they're one of those teams that if you're if you're leaning on betting on them you bet the under because yeah. they're just they're just a really strong defense and seeing the way that they've been able to to piece that defense together and stop other teams from scoring uh, I think that's been the one thing with the Kings uh, that's that's been really big and I think Talbot has been really good in the net uh, sitting here he's sitting at an I had to look it up real quick but he's sitting at a 93 percent in the net so 93% saving percentage, looking really good. Uh, I, I like what the, the what the Kings are putting together and still early enough where if they get on a really good roll, I could see them really start to take over over in the West. Yeah, Cam Talbot has definitely been a big, 
big contribution in the, in oh, the yeah. net for the LA Kings. But I mean, every time I see the LA Kings, I think of all, I think of them as Chrome Domes just for their one side yeah. helmets that they always have. But don't get me wrong, they, they should be illegal. Uh, They're yeah. too distracting. Hey, I mean, <laughs> if it bring, if it gets a dub on the board, it gets a dub on the board to say the least. But no, the LA Kings, they get. They can definitely be another team to where you look at this kind of a style of how they play. They're chippy. They're not gonna. They're not gonna let you mow over them. They're gonna. They're gonna let you come into their arena, and you're gonna get pulverized by the LA Kings. I mean, not you might be blinded, but I mean that's one other topic to talk about. But literally, the way that they can control the puck going into the offensive zone is really, really good. Then even throughout their neutral zone, being able to set something up, going back into the defensive zone behind the net, and literally getting in that aspect for the for the LA Kings, it's huge just obviously you got to start in the defensive zone get the breakout going just because if you can't get it out of the zone then you're going to be in for a rough rough night but the LA Kings have found a ways to get it into the offensive zone and if they keep playing out the way that they do they're going to be another team that we can talk about later down the road here Josh yeah yeah absolutely and I, I love the Kings over in the west too they're always they always seem to put together a really solid team but let's go on we've got the stars the stars are looking really good this season too mm-hmm. uh, I mean we, we know what Joel Pavelski can do and he is the leader of that team there is no doubt uh, he's the guy that's going to lead this team to the playoffs and through the playoffs if they're able to get anywhere mm-hmm. uh, and it's, it's exciting to see a team from from texas you know we talk about florida and these warmer states seeing you know the panthers and and the lightning being able to be good uh you know we really like to see these southern teams start to bring that that hockey culture down there because mm-hmm. i think hockey is one of the most underrated and we've talked about this one of the most underrated sports mm-hmm. and looking at, at what you can you can see from this Dal- dallas stars team uh they're a team that can really turn it on late and just bring the energy and they're they're a very physical team mm-hmm. uh, and, and they showed that last last year in the yeah. the, the playoffs whenever we saw that wild matchup um you know and, and seeing seeing this team i think they they can piece together a lot to be able to make it pretty far too I'm going to tell you right now, just get Joe Pavelski in front of the net, and a guarantee is probably going to go in. Yeah. If, if you guys haven't had an opportunity to see Joe Pavelski's tipping abilities when the shot's in the air, go look it up. He practices after practice. He'll literally stand in front of the net for probably about a half hour to 45 minutes just tipping pucks into the net. It's absolutely mind-boggling. But, I mean, literally, Jamie between Joe Pavelski, Jamie Benn, and even their goaltender in between the pipes, that's, it's been a really, really huge aspect. And, yeah, they're, they're a team that they don't play – they don't play soft. They play heavy. And if you get in front of them, your butt's probably going to be on the ice in the next time you blink. But looking at this aspect, they can control the puck really, really well as well. Like any of these teams can control the puck really well. But you look at this overall aspect on their power play. Their power play is one of the scariest power plays I've seen in the wild so far this season. But they just keep need to. They keep they keep need to put points on the board here, just because if you don't find that smooth rhythm here for the Dallas Stars, I know they're fifth in the rankings here for that division, but or conference fourth. I should say fourth. Okay, yeah. but um, you just need to keep finding a way to get pucks to the net and let your players just do what they're going to do. Either find a nice rebound or, like I said, with Joe Pavelski, get a tip in here and just getting into those kind of a situation to where you just need to keep throwing shots in the net. Like every coach always tells you, throw a puck in the net. Uh, you can either have a bad shot or you can just let the puck find its way to the net here and just let everybody else do the thing and you can find a rebound and let that puck ripple in the back of the net and see that nice red lamp light. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't see – Many teams being able to stand up and and really stop what they have put together there in Dallas too, and so that's what I think makes it really really scary is just the way that they're able to to really fire on all cylinders and and certain games and just all of a sudden go on these hot streaks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so seeing them and like I said, I think just how how aggressive they play too, and and it just seems every game they're the same aggression uh, out there on the ice, and that's yeah. something scary to go to. But let's go to fifth. Uh, a team that we have no worries about, and it's the Avalanche. Seeing with Kale McCarr, who's really putting together a season that he could really be making a really good statement for trying to win that MVP that everyone expects out of him because he's just so talented. But then, of course, they've st- still got Ranton in, and they've got McKinnon, and uh, they've got Devin Taves. And so looking at this this squad, it's just a squad that has been there uh, and, and knows what it takes to be there, and they know – how to win and they know how to get there uh, and so seeing this avalanche team right now too and seeing everything that they've been able to put together sitting there at 11 and 6 kind of a slower start but 
this is something that we're used to with the Avalanche. Just take it easy. It's early in the season. Don't waste all of your all of your energy on the beginning of the season when you can really turn on the Jets towards the end. Just keep that rhythm going, win games, and keep on being a winning team. And that's really all it takes. And they they know what it takes to get there. Um, but seeing this Colorado team, I'm I'm really excited to see what they can put together. And Kale McCarr, one of the most exciting players in all of college era, sorry, all of it, the NHL right now. Yeah. I mean, he was really exciting in college too. Yeah, he was. I mean, like, look, Kale McCarr's edge and skating ability is absolutely mind boggling to me, everybody. Like, there was, I can't remember exactly who they were playing the other night, but all of a sudden he acted like he was going to bring it out of the, bring it out of the zone. And all of a sudden stopped on a dime and just walked down, put a mean shot on it, hit the post. And that, I tell you what, like, Kale McCarr's skating ability and his puck IQ management is, Unbelievable to me, and just being able to see a player that young and just having that much, uh, having that much control in himself, and just his puck handling ability is just truly unbelievable. But like throughout the rest of the roster, obviously some guy named Nathan McKinnon. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but I mean, I know obviously he's another guy. If you see him break out and go into the zone streaking, he is definitely going to be a guy that the goalie is going to be saying, oh, bleep. Um, but literally, the Colorado Avalanche, like you said, they are up to a slow start here, but I know this is something that's nothing new to the Colorado Avalanche. They've sl- they've had slow starts in the past years, and looking at how they've been able to bounce back towards the three-quarter mark of the season, then just getting dub after dub after dub, and they're just being able to just keep progressing and just being able to keep their competitive emphasis competitiveness and style of play here they can i don't think they're worried right now obviously like you said still really early in the season and looking towards colorado at the end of the year closer to that i definitely think they're going to be obviously in the stanley cup playoffs if they keep that competitiveness and just keep playing the way that they are yeah there's there's no doubt in my mind that they're a team that will make the playoffs and will cause a lot of havoc in the playoffs Mm -hmm. the way that they play they're just such a talented team that that uses that team chemistry so well Mm -hmm. And, and seeing what they're able to put together. So uh, a lot of teams so far that, man, I'm really excited to see. And I, I just, I'm already looking forward to the NHL playoffs because that's that's when the the heart comes from yeah. from all of these teams that have made it that far. Uh, and I feel like any, any sport is kind of that way once you see those playoffs starting to take out. I think uh, at least in pro sports, because you look at the NFL, the playoffs are, are really where it's at. The MLB, absolutely, I feel like nobody really pays attention to the MLB until the playoffs, you know, yeah. start to get here. And, uh, you know, and then looking, you know, the, the I, I think the NBA is another one. Uh, and then, of course, the N- NHL as well. So really exciting. But let's talk about a team that we're not going to talk about being a top team. But we're going to talk about Connor Bedard, a guy that was supposed to be the saving grace for Chicago, the guy that was supposed to come in and be the kid uh, that's going to be, you know, just turn this entire franchise around. And it's not going to happen in one season. And nobody really expects it to. Um, But seeing him, there was so much hype coming around him. Who's going to be able to get that number one pick to be able to pull him in and be able to to help their organization? And he's been a, a very good. Uh, you know he, he's been really good all season long. A, a, a phenomenal rookie season. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's sitting there at nine goals, six assists, so fifteen points so far on the season, uh, and and he's not too far into the season at all. But looking at last year, the Blackhawks they were sitting at twenty eight and forty two to end the season, a terrible season, mm-hmm. uh, and they they're ready to turn things around. They want to turn things around now, and it's it's a historically great program to a franchise that is known for winning. Mm-hmm. And so it hurts to see them go down like that last season. And now they're currently sitting at a 5-11 and 11, uh, with a lot of season left. So they could really turn things around. But looking at Connor Bedard, this is a guy that I think we're going to talk about a lot getting into the, his NHL career. And obviously, so far, he's fitting in in the NHL just fine. It's what the rest of the team can put around him. Uh, and I think he's made a lot of rookie mistakes, but we expect that from him. He's a rookie. This is, this is a huge step up from where he just now was mm-hmm. uh, prior to coming to the NHL. So so seeing Connor Bedard, is this a guy that we see turning this this entire franchise around, or is it maybe a guy that's going to be so good that ends up being a lot of uh, maybe maybe they get a lot of stock out of him by trading him later on because it's just not a good fit in Chicago? What do you see with Connor Bedard uh, so far? Because we've seen him uh, here in what uh, sixteen games into the season into his NHL career. I mean, Connor Bedard, he's definitely got talent. We've all known that for Connor Bedard. We've watched him play in the minors, and he's just he's lit up unbelievable highlight goals in here. But I don't necessarily think he's going to stay with Chicago. I think he's going to be traded somewhere, or he's going to request a trade to go somewhere else. But like Connor Bedard, 
his so far in the season, obviously, like I said, going against first game, going against some guy named Sidney Crosby. I mean, I don't know exactly what Sid had for his rookie year for for um, for stats wise, but I mean, I know you got to start somewhere. Obviously, I mean, having 15 points for right now, that's that's a good start for a rookie. I mean, you, you got to start somewhere. I mean, I don't know if that's just because um, Br- Brad Marchand was just. I know he was absolutely be eating him alive when they yeah. were playing against Boston. And just throughout this entire season so far, he's been ate up. Like, I know obviously a rookie, oh, we're going to pick on the rookie here in that kind of a situation. But at the same time, you still got to realize everybody's still here. They've made it this far. And they, they're they here to show that we're here going to be putting on our everything to get, get the fans to what they want here. But for overall – down the road, I honestly wouldn't be surprised seeing maybe three or four years down the road. I can honestly maybe see Connor Bedard going to maybe like a Colorado or even maybe like – maybe even like down south go to see Dallas or even maybe possibly go give Arizona a shot. I know Arizona is right now in desperate need for help, so who knows what that organization can do. I mean, but looking at this over aspect, Connor Bedard, he's definitely had – he's definitely had some pretty good shots so far in the NHL. I know – Obviously, we've all talked about getting that first one off the ba- monkey off the bag is huge. Then now, obviously, like you said, having 15 points so far in the season that's pretty good for a rookie. I still have to say, yeah, almost a point per game. I mean, exactly. I, I just I don't think you can really criticize him too much. And no. and he's coming into a dumpster fire of an organization. Like I said, sitting there 28 and 42 last year. So you don't expect them to turn around and have yeah. much better than maybe a 500 season. You yeah. know, if if they can even reach that. If you're gonna break lucky, yeah. So I just I, looking at him, I think he's been phenomenal. Phenomenal so far. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's all kinds of opportunities for him, too. And I think if he stays on this path, this could be the team that, who knows, there, there's been players like Sid who just stick around with one one franchise, and that's just who, that, what they're happy with. And, you know, and even looking at a guy that just retired, Patrice Bergeron, and seeing what, what he did over there with Boston, he could totally be that guy. And I think he could be a guy to turn this this franchise around. When you bring that kind of excitement to a franchise, the, the fans are getting back into it. They're excited to see what he's able to do on the ice. I think that can really help uh, kind of get this this entire franchise, the team rolling. And it's going to take some veterans to kind of step in and, yeah. you know, come in there and help him out. But once you start to get build that talent, and I think starting off with him and, and seeing what other pieces they've put together so far, uh, I, th- I think it's it's really excited. I think we're going to have to keep up with this kid throughout his career, um, but es- especially this season, and seeing what the, the Blackhawks are able to do because they're sitting at the bottom of, of their, their conference right now and even in their division uh, just above the San Jose Sharks in their conference. So, I mean, they're, it's not like they're – they're looking really good that they're going to come out and they're going to start winning all these games, but they're hanging around. That's what, that's the thing that I see with this Blackhawks team that, you know, last year it was just, they were just a a joke, much like what we see from the San Jose Sharks this year uh, and, and just, or even the blue jackets the last few years. But last year, they, they, they were such an embarrassment that now turning around to this year, you see a little bit of a different energy from the Middle East. Yeah. And so I think you could start to see a lot of, a lot, a lot of a different uh, turnaround there from the Blackhawks. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, don't even also, yeah, I remember like talking about Jonathan Tays with the, with the Chicago Blackhawks, he's had some health issues and that's mm-hmm. also been a really, really big thing for the Chicago Blackhawks. But like throughout this entire time, it's definitely been rough. Like you obviously just said, but yeah, I still think give it, Give it two, three years, maybe, and everybody will get get set in stone, and pretty acquainted. Like I know, obviously, right now everyone's still still new, getting acquainted with what Bernard can do. But yeah, I seriously think give it a couple of years, and Bernard will de- definitely be a name that we'll always be talking about here in the league. Oh, absolutely. But let's go ahead and jump over to some games that are going to be happening on Wednesday night. So this yeah. episode is going to be released on Wednesday for you guys watching. You're watching right now in the morning. Uh, hopefully you see this before these games are going on. But mm-hmm. some really fun games when you look at it. And it's Thanksgiving weekend, uh, or I guess coming up Thanksgiving week. And, and so seeing everything, it's just fun to have this time off to sit around and watch all kinds of games. Of course, we're going to have fun watching uh, NFL and college football, but when it comes to hockey, Wednesday is going to really be reserved for hockey because we've got two big-time matchups. We brought it up earlier. The Bruins-Panthers, kind of a rematch here that is super exciting to go back to because what we saw last year when we got to the playoffs was a Bruins team that just came in, and they were hotter than any other team has ever been in NHL history coming in with the best win percentage in, in NHL history and coming into the in a an absolutely historic season and then just being completely upset by a team that barely made the playoffs yeah. and arguably didn't even deserve to be in the playoffs. 
and they pushed them into it was a game seven yep. that that one went to and end up knocking off the top dog the underdog just completely coming through in that that story uh with these these panthers being able to do what they did last year in the playoffs it's it's another really exciting year and again because we look at that division you've got a number one bruins against the number two panthers now in that division so looking at this this matchup i think it's really exciting seeing what what pasternak and marshan and and the list goes on with the bruins that are on that team right now and what they're able to put together a very hot team and and the, the bruins finally lost a game here uh was it last night or the night before uh, and so looking at what they've they've been putting together they have just been on fire uh, and obviously this doesn't matter so much when we look at the grand scheme of things this season um, but it is a big game coming into this game here on Wednesday night oh yeah absolutely I mean, if you if you're going to talk about one particular game this is definitely going to be the game that everybody's going to be talking about just because obviously the Stanley Cup playoff last year beating Boston in Boston and game seven, that was just the icing on the cake for Florida and just being able to do that. And obviously everyone remembers their epic milestone that they did last year. That was absolutely unbelievable for the Florida Panthers. But looking at this kind of a game, I definitely see the physicality level for this game to be up there. I think there's going to be a lot of penalties. I think there's going to be a lot of physicality and just throughout this entire game, you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of shots uh, between both sides and the both teams here. But the one thing that's going to come down to it is is Brad is Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand going to keep their cool just because if you're going to start getting into penalty trouble, then that's going to be a really big thing for the Florida Panthers because obviously we've seen the Florida Panthers and what they're able to do. And if you get them on a power play situation, they could be able to put the puck in the back of the net. And same with the Florida Panthers because you're going – is. Is it in Boston or is it in Florida, Josh? Do you know? Uh, I'm going to have to look that up. Because, I mean, if it's in Boston, then um, it's definitely going to be a really, really... You'll hear the crowd in that kind of a favor. I mean, don't get me wrong. you hear the crowd on whether it's in Boston. It looks Boston. like it's going to be down in Florida. Okay, it's going to be in the Florida. It's going to be in the in the better weather that we're receiving right now. And it's, it's not the first time they've gone against each other this mm-hmm. season, but it's still fun to look back and to see this, this uh, you know, this... These two teams kind of clash. Yeah. And you know that Boston wants to run this series. It's going to be a four-game series throughout the, the season. Mm-hmm. And this is the second time. They they went against each other uh, a little while back. I think it was somewhere late October. And uh, Boston ended up winning in overtime in that yeah. one, too. So that was a really fun matchup. But then seeing them come into this matchup, it's it's just – I guess it's more exciting because we're able to sit down. Uh, a lot of us have time off. We're able to to sit around with family and watch some, and watch some sports. I think this is going to be a really fun matchup. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if there's – like I said, if there's one marquee game to watch, this is definitely going to be the game to watch in my honest perspective, Josh. But, I mean, you think about it, the, the Florida Panthers are definitely – in the back of Boston's mind, this is definitely one of those serious games that they just want to make, they just want to beat them up and they just want to get this dub out of the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and looking at the last matchup too, and just the way that everything shaped up, uh, what, what's crazy with this Boston team is just how much they can allow you to move the puck and still keep it contained. Mm-hmm. Because we saw that with with the with Florida, I feel like they had the the puck most of the time. And they had they they won in in shots on goal. They won uh, pretty much in everything in position or in possession. And they even had more hits. They were the more physical team. But Boston was just able to contain them within this bubble and pull up pull up you know pull out the win. And obviously going into overtime, so it's not like one team really dominated the other team. But it feels like if you look back at the stat sheet, that the Panthers should have beat Boston yet yeah. again. But instead, Boston comes out victorious. Uh, do you think this is one that, man, Boston just they they feel disrespected that that you know they ended up losing this last time, uh, and and the last matchup that they had was in Boston. Uh, so you know, do you feel like maybe Boston feels disrespected that not only did you beat us in the playoffs when you shouldn't have, but now you come into our our home stadium and beat us in the regular season. Man, we, we really need to pull one, or you almost beat us in the regular season, yeah. sorry, uh, and you push us to overtime and kind of make us look like fools. Yeah. Now, 
you're coming at us again. We, do you think they just really want to pumble, pumble them down this time? And, you know, we're, we're the dominant team. We're going to keep it that way. Without a doubt. I mean, this is definitely a team to where you would think they're going to roll in, just absolutely steamroll over these guys. And Florida is definitely, like I said, they've gotten their name out there, and they want to keep their name out in the spotlight instead of down in the – down and underneath a rock, but literally Boston, they definitely, like I said, they have to play to their full potential, which we could, we will expect to see. And we all know, obviously Florida is going to be playing that exact same way. So this is really going to be a really good dog fight here. I think in my opinion. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, going on to another big time game that I wanted to bring up was Dallas, uh, going against Vegas Knights, two teams that we just talked about, uh, two big time teams. I think this is another really fun matchup because you've got a, a team in Vegas who, really has just been on fire. Just they, they, they look like that dominant team. They're the reigning champs. They don't look like they've got that, that championship hangover whatsoever. Uh, they're, they're coming out hot this year. They won last time in a shootout uh, against the Dallas Stars. Mm-hmm. So seeing this matchup come out, come out to the, the second of a three-game series this season, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a pride thing for any team to be able to walk away from a series with a win. They could secure winning the series by just simply winning this game So mm-hmm. with Vegas. Uh, and so, you know, Vegas coming into this game, uh, obviously I, th- I think they've got the upper hand, but, uh, you know, when, when you look at this, it's going to be in Dallas uh, and it's, it's going to be a rowdy <laughs> crew down there because, like I said, you're going to have people that are off for you know, vacation and off for the holiday, and so you're going to have a packed house and ready to roll, ready to rumble, and it's, it's going to be a really fun atmosphere and seeing these top two teams uh, who are really sitting up there towards the top of their standings, uh, you're going you're gonna to have the Dallas Stars want to come out there, and, and I, I think on the other side of things, they don't want to lose this series, and so they have to keep themselves alive, and a, the only way to do that is by winning this game. Absolutely. I mean, you, going to this another matchup, this is definitely going to be a fun one. My big thing for Vegas, you need to stop Dallas's fast transition mobility just because you can see them down in the in the neutral zone and then all of a sudden they're burning you right by the boards just trying to drive to the net here that's one big thing that i've seen a lot of dallas do so far this season and it's definitely played an advantage to them just because like i said you get one individual player that's just absolutely just streaking in the net getting a good head of steam in the neutral and he put the he puts the puck in the back of the net. Players need to adjust to that, and their defense need to be aware, and they need to communicate with the with the with the forwards here. And it, on looking on the other side of the zone for the Vegas Golden Knights, they need to do the same thing on defensive line. They need to just pummel and just block shots and just keep the ball rolling here for the Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, they they're one of the they're one of the teams that. They may be new, but they have an older roster here in this kind of a situation. And sometimes in that situation, it may be a little bit of a disadvantage, but you get that older mentality on a team, and they can have a lot of chemistry that they've been around the league a lot. And this could definitely be a really, really fun game, or it can be a game that's going to be completely blown out of the water down in Texas, Josh. But I don't I don't know. I, looking at this game, it's definitely going to be fun, for, for to say the least. Yeah, another one that I feel like brings a lot of energy in seeing these two teams and just how good they've been to start off the season. And again, a, a team that you don't normally expect this out of the reigning champs to come out on all cylinders. Yeah. Uh, and so the fact that they have, I think that, that makes it really fun. Uh, and then, you know, looking at, at uh, Jake Ottinger uh, in, in the net too, I think the way that he – he plays, I think he's sitting, if I, if I remember right, I think I looked up his stat earlier and he was sitting there right around 92% as well on saving percentage. So he's just a dude that is really hard to score on, but it's also a Vegas Golden Knights team that is really good at just sitting back, controlling the game and finding ways to score. So it's going to be fun uh, and it's going to be a tough one for the Vegas Golden Knights to go into Dallas to try to win this one. Definitely. Uh, We're going to talk about some epic goalies getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, but before we do, another sponsor that we need to bring up and that is SeatGeek. Guys, if you haven't used SeatGeek, it is absolutely a site that you need to use for any of your, your ticket purchasing needs. Whether you're purchasing a ticket to a football game, a hockey game, any kind of sporting event, If you're going to go to an NHL game and you want to catch one, look up SeatGeek.com and check out the pricing that they offer. They offer some of the best and most most competitive pricing on the market, and they make it extremely easy. 
You can also download the SeatGeek app to bring it along with you. No matter where you go, you have it right there on your phone. You pull it up, and it's the easiest way to find the greatest deals on tickets uh, in any kind of sport, a sporting event, or even if you're going to a concert or some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of show, anything like that. Uh, they've got all kinds of events. I'm amazed by the types of events that they have. They have comedy events. Uh, they have parking tickets on there for if you're going to an event. So you can get it all through the SeatGeek app and make it extremely easy. They also have an amazing color coding system that makes it so easy to find tickets. I use SeatGeek for all of my ticket purchasing needs because it's just so much easier in their app and it's very easy to to purchase tickets. Uh, Very simple, very quick checkout uh, and it's very painless. And so I love SeatGeek. I have been using SeatGeek for uh, as long as I can remember and uh, we're so happy to have them as a a sponsor, as a partner. You can go to SeatGeek.com or download the app and use code R2TO for $20 off your next ticket purchase. So go check them out, SeatGeek.com or download the SeatGeek app and use code R2TO for $20 off. Uh, Again, we, we love SeatGeek and we thank them so much for sponsoring this episode. But man, let's get into some some of these goalies that have been inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, we had it was a few weeks ago now, but we wanted to bring this up uh, that uh, you know we've got these goalies. Uh, starting off with Henrik Lundqvist, an amazing goalie, and of course I'm going to be biased towards him. Um, and then you've got uh, Tom Barrasso, uh, and then Mike Vernon, and all of these make it into the Hall of Fame. They're inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I want to show a little bit of love for goalies, of course, with my uncle uh, being a goalie and, and uh, him, him always teaching me to respect the goalies for what, what they're worth. And honestly, I think that's one of the positions that gets so much hate uh, because they're the guy that let, let the puck pass them if there's any goals. But they do also get overlooked in so many aspects of the game from some of the amazing saves that they're able to do. And when you look at guys like, obviously I think Henrik Lundqvist is one of the ones that I remember the most and watching just because of course with him being a ranger for so long and seeing how amazing he was in the net, uh, really all three of these guys super deserving and, and seeing what they've, they've accomplished in their careers, extremely happy for them. Uh, and, 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 it's just an, a really fun thing to be able to see goalies uh, getting the respect that they deserve, and especially into this this level of respect being put into the Hall of Fame for the NHL. Uh, what do you have to say about these three guys being inducted? First things first, obviously, congratulations to everyone who just got inducted. That's an unbelievable honor to be able to see you guys put your blood, sweat, and tears, and a lot of pain, too, to be inducted in the NHL Hall of Fame. And like Josh, you said it the best, goalies don't get as much credit as they really, really should. I mean, it's one thing to see a goalie just go out there and just stand in front of the net, but you see these these key highlights, say, if they put in night in, night out, and then just being able to face a puck that's coming at you at 100-plus mile an hour. I mean, um, I've seen – a lot of hard slap shots, but I mean, I've never seen anything over hundred in real life. And I can only imagine what it's like to see on TV, but I can only imagine what it's like being the guy to actually stop the puck. And it's definitely a, a really, really good show of what goalies mean to the NHL and just the overall organization. They deserve a lot of credit for this kind of a situation. But like you said, between Hendrick Lundqvist and the two other candidates, that's a really, really awesome honor that they get their names and everything inducted into the Hall of Fame. Just It, it really show, goes to show you that it's not just all the forwards and defensemen that get inducted to the Hall of Fame. The goalies mean a lot of a lot to the NHL committee and everybody too. So it's really, really, it's really cool to see that the goalies get into this kind of situation here. Yeah, absolutely. And that's, uh, it's, it's, Mainly, mainly with Henry Lundqvist being able to see him and just, mm-hmm. you know, you and I growing up, that was the goalie, yeah. you know, of the NHL. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's, it kind of shows kind of how young we are, I guess, when you think of him being the goalie to look at. But, man, yeah, he just – he had an amazing career. And then, of course, Tom Barrasso as well and, and Mike Vernon both uh, also having an amazing career and making it this far, being inducted. Absolutely. Uh, congratulations to all three of them yeah. for making it into the Hall of Fame. That's that's a really tough task. And if you think of, of you know, just how many people get into really any sport – and and how many people start off in, in little leagues and work towards getting, you know, working their way into high school and junior leagues and 
all of these different leagues that you have to go through even to make it to the NHL Mm -hmm. and how difficult that is to make it to the NHL or even any of these higher leagues and and European leagues and the AHL and uh, CHL. So, I mean, you you look at all of these different leagues and and, and how difficult it is to get into the higher leagues of any sport and especially with hockey and just how how many talents are out there. Uh, It's it's a tough task to get there. So it's, it's an amazing amazing accomplishment to have your name remembered forever for eternity you're going to be down in the hall of fame that must be an amazing feeling to to have your name put there oh, yeah, absolutely but i actually had a couple of stats pulled up for each of these goaltenders for i'll start with hendrick lundquist he played 887 games he won 459 had 64 shutouts had a GAA of 2.43 and a save percentage of 0. .918. Then going on to um, Tom Barrasso with the Old Pittsburgh Penguins, he played 777 games, had 369 wins, 38 shutouts with a GAA of 3.24 and a save percentage of 0. .892. And going on to the final one for uh, for Mike Vernon, obviously with the Calgary Flames back in the day, um, he played 782 games, had 385 wins, 27 shutouts, a GAA of 2.98 and a save percentage of 0. .889. Yeah, I mean, looking at these guys too, all, all of these guys above – you know, above 88% really on save mm-hmm. percentage. And uh, Lundqvist sitting at, the, at a 91%, almost 92% on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, these guys are phenomenal goalies. Uh, and it's it's hard to be that good. And we've, we've seen guys where mm-hmm. they have an amazing season and all of a sudden they just crumble. And so I, I feel like the goalie, it's one of those positions that's one of the toughest because you're, you're overlooked when you win, but then – it's all on you when you lose. Yeah. So it's it's a tough position. And so uh, just a little bit of a, a love to the goalies out there. Um, but let's go over to a story that you brought up to my attention, uh, one that is kind of big news right now just because of some of the events that have happened. Uh, of course, we've, we've talked about uh, we've, we've talked about those events and, and what happened. And, uh, you know, I t- you and I talked about it. We'd just rather not go any further into that uh, just – looking at at some of the the things that are going on in the game and what they're trying to do to prevent any kind of more injuries from skates and uh you know it's 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 tough because you know we we talked about uh you know with with adding any kind of protective equipment i feel like you're just adding more equipment onto guys every year and it just seems if you keep on adding they're just going to be wrapped in bubble wrap pretty much so uh, it, it's tough to to really look at it how how do you crack down on certain rules how do you how do you make sure that certain things don't happen? And I don't feel like there really is a certain answer on, on how you do these things. Yeah. So, you know, looking at, at what the NHL did, uh, you know, we, we watched, uh, the, we watched the replay here just a minute, minute ago. Um, but, uh, it's the Vancouver Canucks forward. Uh, his name is Nils Hoglander and he's been fined $2,864. Uh, this is the maximum allowable coll- for collectible bargaining agreement. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's, He's fined this max for uh, slew footing and against the San Jose Sharks forward Kevin LeBlanc, uh, LeBanc, uh, and it was just uh, a couple of days ago, I guess, from the day that this is uh, this is released yeah. last night for us uh, on Monday night. And you, you go back and watch the replay; it's very obvious that he. So, for those who don't know, slew footing is where you're uh, kind of pushing with your your foot and kind of tripping them at with your foot at the same time of pushing them uh, in the forward and, and trying to take the, any any motion of sweeping their feet out. And it's really dangerous, uh, and it's oh, it's been a, a, a league rule for a long time because of how dangerous it can be having their foot come above anyone's mm-hmm. head or anything like that and getting uh, where that skate is now exposed to, to where uh, people can really get injured. And obviously with recent events – we know why that's such a, a bad thing. It's something that really needs to be cracked down on. And I'm 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 happy for the NHL standing up and, and taking action on this uh, because I think this is something that needs to be watched out for. And I think this is one of those rules that, especially in, in light of, of recent events, that we, we need to be careful of. And it's something that I'm really happy that they were able to act upon it in a way that makes – the players realize how serious things like this uh, are right now. And, you know, with, with slew footing, it gets so dangerous because that skate comes above uh, above the head and it, it exposes that skate now to be, you know, it, it's a sharp blade and it's intended to be sharp so that way you can 
skate on the ice and you you and i have both tried to skate on ice with dull blades and immediately realized yeah this is a dull blade this yes, needs to be sharpened work. asap uh yeah. you, we have we've stopped skating immediately to go get our, our blades sharpened and then come back out on the ice yep. um you know it's, uh, it's it's a very important thing to have that blade sharp but that's also a part of the danger of the game and players know that players understand that um but i mean d- d- I, I personally, I, I commend the NHL for taking action, recognizing these things, and and also for the referees because this started off as a minor, and they went back to to look at it and realized, no, this is something that's very dangerous. This is not going to be allowed in the NHL uh, or really any of the the NHL affiliates from now on, and making sure that they crack down on these kind of rules. Uh, and, and it's it's a scary thing too when you think about it for the players. And this is this isn't the first time that this has happened, but it's just such national news since it happened on national television. It's such a big league, and and all of, all of these these things kind of surrounding that event. Uh, so again, I, I commend the NHL for sticking up and saying, hey. This isn't going to be allowed. Uh, and another thing, too, um, the, the money that, that gets fined, it goes to the Players Emergency Assistance Fund, mm. uh, which is a really, cool, really cool thing that they use that funding, not just to put in their own pockets, but to go to our, towards a specific fund for if injuries do happen for these things. Yeah. I mean, I've been, I've been slew-footed in hockey one time. I kid you not, it was one of the most scariest things that have happened to me. And... I'm thankful I didn't get seriously hurt. And shout out to the NHL and the committee for for standing up and doing this kind of an a, a proper action for getting this assorted. I mean, if if you didn't understand like for what Josh was talking about for understanding the term of a slew foot, go type in Boston Bruins slew foot and you can find a lot of clips off of that because there's one guy by the name of Brad Marchand. He's kind of a wrath for what everyone's been saying about him. Um, He's done it plenty of times, and everyone, of course, says they don't intentionally mean to do it, but, I mean, you can say what you want. Um, but, no, my hat's off to the NHL and getting this getting this settled because the last thing with what the NHL and everything that's currently happening so far in the minors and just everything that – it's one thing we don't want to see anybody hurt or anything farther than that. I'm not going to go into that kind of detail, but – just, I'm thankful that the NHL is able to step up in this kind of a situation and make this big of an executive decision just because this isn't just a simple little tripping call. This is something that you're completely getting swept off your feet and you can land wrong, whether it's on your back or on your shoulder or on the back of your neck. And this can seriously do some serious damage here, guys. So, Lily, when we saw the replay of it, at first I was thinking, because it was in real life, I thought he was maybe first losing his edge, and he was just falling. And then once he slowed it down and everything, then I really understood why that they called it a slew foot penalty. And it it goes to – it really mind, bo- mind bobbles me just because you're in the NHL and you're doing a pity thing to get the player to fall down. And I don't, I'm assuming you're probably not thinking about it. And if you are, you need to think a little bit harder about this kind of an action just because – this is someone's life that we can be talking about here. Well, yeah, and, and on top of that, too, I mean, it's it's dangerous for players around. Uh, exactly. And then you brought it up, too. It's it's dangerous for the player you're doing it to. And just mm-hmm. it, you're you're on slick ice. Yeah. This isn't an easy game to, yeah. to stand, uh, let alone skate around and yeah. keep your balance. So that, that, that's something that's constantly going. You don't really think about it yeah. because it just becomes kind of part of your muscle memory and you're just doing it. But yeah. it is it is something that's your body is constantly balancing. Mm-hmm. And, and so, I mean, it, it becomes much more dangerous. And I think there's a lot more to hockey that makes it dangerous and the fact that that hockey is so violent is what draws people in because you can hit each other you can slam each other up against the boards yeah. and there's a way to do that without doing things like this and I, yeah i mean this is something that i think uh i'm glad that they're they're cracking down on it and trying to stop it as much as they can mm-hmm. at least making players well aware of of the dangers out on the ice and right. saying hey this isn't going to happen anymore right. uh and and i think that's why this instance uh with hoaglander is, is so so uh, widely known and why it's becoming a, a, a top headline is just because hey this is something that's happening in the league this needs to be me made, be made, made aware of yeah. uh, and so yeah and I, I definitely think it's a good thing that they're they're cracking down on it yeah absolutely I mean if, if you if you let things like that go you're gonna lose you're gonna lose a lot of tempers from every player and you're not gonna get nowhere near much respect as what you originally thought you had from any player in the league. But yeah, my hats is off to the NHL and just getting this settled. And then I, I really want to see less of this. I know it don't happen a lot, but 
for when it does, it always seems like it happens more and more in the season. So I really hope that this is just a one-time fluke thing, that it's not going to keep being repetitive and repetitive. And I really hope we don't see Brad Marchand doing the same thing next week or even maybe tomorrow. But, I mean, I'm just thankful that we got a good league that's cracking down on this kind of a situation and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good move for them, uh, and, and I think it's a good thing to kind of keep your authority too. Mm-hmm. And so that's just one of those things. But Absolutely. guys, we thank you all so much for watching. Uh, that's pretty much all we've got for today. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that like button, and you can also hit that subscribe button. That helps us out so much, and we've been growing a lot lately. And it's a huge thanks to you guys. Um, and if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, you give us a five star review. That's the best way to help us out over there. We're going to make sure to give some reviews as we're thankful for all of those those reviews and reminded of how thankful we are uh, for this Thanksgiving season. We're planning on having another episode drop on Thursday. Uh, we're releasing one on Wednesday just because we haven't been able to get to you guys and we wanted to talk about some hockey. Um, so we're going to we're going to put one out before Thanksgiving as well, hopefully. Um, but if we don't, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Uh, we thank you all so much. You can go over to rising2.com. That's R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com to check out all of our uh, our content and everything that we do. It's over there. Uh, we thank you guys all so much for all of your support. And until next time.